Welcome back to JTMJ Crafts. My name's Jeremy. How's your day going? I hope it is spectacular. So today I've been trying to figure out something to talk about. What you gonna talk about? Um, so I went back and I seen in my Saturday live stream, I asked what kind of topic would y'all like to listen to for a whipping chat? Sorry, I'm being extra. I'm a, uh, I'm a, I'm a little goofball today. Um, so a couple people said talk about your mom because October is think pink. It is a hard time of the year for me. But I have learned to live my life and don't tread on bad things. Look to the future. My mom's with me, you know, in spirit. But I greatly miss her. So... I was like, alright, I can talk about my mom. Uh, no bad things, because there was a time where, when, during my mom's cancer, where she was, she was bad, she wasn't, she wasn't good, she was taking morphine like it was candy, not remembering when she was taking it, and she was just doubling up on her doses, and yeah, it was bad. And I'm the only one that Seemed to kind of keep track of what she was doing. But we're looking at the good times. Because those bad times are embedded in my head. And I I want to think about the good times. Not let the other get in the way. So... My mom, um, if you guys don't know, I was a mama's boy, like big time mama's boy. Um, I think all three of us were mama's boys because I had, I have an older brother and a younger brother. And yeah, I think we're all mama's boys. Dad worked a lot. Dad played softball all the time, so, yeah, we didn't see Dad very much. He paid the bills, though, so, I guess that's okay. Not. <clears throat> um, so, from what I can remember, my mom's parents... Moved to, um, shoot, what little town were they living in? So they moved from Ohio to, it was in San Bernardino County. Um, I'm drawing a blank. They lived in Orange County for a while. They lived in Riverside for a while. They lived in... They lived a little all over the place. They took care of trailer parks. And... I remember going down to my grandparents' houses all the time as a kid. And... My mom and dad would be like, all right, you guys, have a good one. See you later. And they would take off and go do what they wanted to do. And we'd spend time with grandma and grandpa. Don't get me wrong, I love my grandma and grandpa. But, oh, good lord. Because my grandma, my mom's mom, wanted to drag me all over the freaking trailer park to meet everybody. Like, good God, Grandma, I, I don't need to meet everybody in the trailer park. And the whole time, I'm, we're walking 
down the driveway to this other lady's house. She's scolding us on how to shake the person's hand. You shake him with your right hand. You give him a good squeeze. Make it count. It's like, Grandma, I know how to shake a hand. Jesus. Uh, no, not really. I would never speak like that with my grandma. My grandmother was the very church-going Christian. Like, but then my other grandma, my dad's mom, I like to go into her house because she lived in uh, Fontana, which is just outside of L.A. area. Um, my dad's from Fontana. My mom was from, like, Riverside, Orange County, which is all around that same general area. And... My mom and my dad met in high school. My, they both went to college. I know, they met in college. They met in college. And my dad used to run track and all that good stuff. And my mom, she used to ride horses. And she used to, her and her, my aunt used to uh, barrel race down there. And my aunt, my aunt and my mom both were really good. <clears throat> and uh, my dad had the opportunity to go try out for the um, Los Angeles um, Angels. <clears throat> they had an open tryout back in like 70... What do you think? I, I can't remember what he said. It was like 74 or 75. Cause he was thinking about taking it. And then he found out my mom was pregnant. So my dad was like, no, I can't do it. I can't be on the road. Because he went and tried out for the Angels. And they offered him a, a position at shortstop. No, second base, sorry. He would play shortstop or second they offered him a position for second base. My dad's one of the best second basemen I've ever seen in my life. And I've played softball for a long time. And uh, they offered him the job, and my dad took, took, went home and told my mom, and she told him that she, she was pregnant, and then that was with my older brother. And... He was born in 75. And so my dad just said, went back to him and told him, sorry. So, wife's having a baby. And there's something that's going on between them that they said they would, they didn't have sex until they got married but my brother was born like a day after the wedding or something like that i can't remember exactly what it was and they tried they tried playing the fool on us anyways so my Mom's mom told him, you know, we need to get you guys out of here. We need to move up to California. Or not California. We're already in California. Duh. We need to move up to the some better country. Get out on some property and raise your boys the right way. So my grandpa and my grandma came down here. Or up here, I guess you'd say. Um... And found this property, that, uh, trap, that I am on right now, and bought it. 
and we've owned it ever since, 73. And then in, they were had my grandpa was having some houses brought in, which back then it was uh, trailers. Just like the trailer I live in right now, mobile home. He was having some of them brought in, but they're from like the 70s, so they were like super old back then. I mean, they were top of the line back then, but nothing like what they're made like these days. And I went back home. And in 77, I was born. And let's see. I was 10 pounds, one ounce when I was born. We lived down there until I was five months old. When we found out I had, well, I was born with a growth hormone deficiency. So, the doctor gave us the option of one doctor who knew something about it. And it just happened to be about three hours away from where my grandfather bought property. And we were about 14 hours, oh no. Ten hours away from the doctor that he required us to go to, which is in Sacramento, UC Davis Hospital. And so we moved here. I moved here when I was five months old. I went to UC Davis every day for the rest of my life until I was 18 years old. <clears throat> and then we lived our nice happy life here in this town. And that's when, I mean, growing up with my mom brings back so many good memories. My mom was one of those ladies that they're one in a few where she could be in the craft room and she could be making some killer crafts, clothes, whatever you can think about. And at the same time, she could be in the shop fixing your car when you can't figure it out. Yeah, that was my mom. My mom was a genius when it came to cars. Whenever I had an issue, I'd be like, Hey mom, I can't figure this out. And she'd be like, okay, let me come listen to it. And she'll come out and within like... Two minutes, she would have it fixed. You gotta be freaking kidding me. Why didn't I see that? You know, it's like, ah. But she was just that good. And then she had a passion for horses. Um, kind of complicated. My... Let's see, it was my mom's great uncle, so it was my great great uncle, or something like that. I don't, I don't know the actual terminology of how it, how it is, but he lived in uh, kind of a Bakersfield area, which is. Closer than L.A., but still a good drive. And my mom went down there to visit. And my uncle, uh, great uncle, whatever he is, Johnny, he was, uh, he was old. He was uh, not doing too good. He was trying to condense down on some horses. And my mom fell in love with 
this one horse. So he gave it to my mom. And they went and rented a No, did they rent a horse trailer or did they take a horse trailer with them? I think they rented a horse trailer. They just took the truck. They rented a horse trailer from U-Haul. And the horses wouldn't go into it because we were bringing two horses home. The one horse actually stood up on her back legs and put her feet on top of the cab of the trailer and then that's when we were like yeah this horse is not going in there so he used to um race horses back in the day he hadn't raced in a long time because he had a, a horse get hurt on the starting line and he just he was wasn't down for the, the sport anymore so he had some horses that he was still breeding and going on. He had like 120 horses and he couldn't take care of all of them. He was he was getting too bad in age and his wife was telling him you got to get rid of some of these. So my mom went down and picked up two of them. She got the one she got was Mo and the one my my brother ended up with how did my brother end up with it I don't even know I kind of helped break her because she kept throwing my brother every time my brother could on her she would, she would throw him right out of the seat say see ya one day I was down there watching him and I said hey what are you doing with her mouth? And he's just don't worry about what I'm doing with her mouth. Blah, 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 blah. Thinking he's well, Mr. Horseman. So I sit there and watch, and he's like yanking her around by her mouth. And I'm just like, here, let me put this in your mouth and see how you like it. So he gets off and walks off because he's all pissed off and left the saddle on her. So I go over, get on her, and I'm riding her around and she's not bucking, kicking, nothing. He comes walking back over and goes, what the hell? How'd you do that? Said, you had that freaking bit going up her goddamn nose. It's hard as you were pulling that damn thing. She, all she was asking for was a little freaking... A little less yanking at the mouth. As soon as I let those reins go, but held them still at a... A, uh... Pressure so she knew not to put her head down. Because if you put her head down, she's going to buck. He was just trying to freaking yank her mouth around so she wouldn't buck. And she was just like getting pissed. She's like, screw you. You think you're going to do that and I ain't going to buck? Well, watch this, buddy. And after that, he got it figured out. But we ended up and got rid of her because she was a bad horse. She was a good horse. It's just she had bad habits. We, me and my mom tried fixing that horse a lot. So many times we tried fixing her. Just could not figure it out. She was a what they call a cribber. And cribbing means... Uh, what's the best way to explain it? So if your horse is a cribber... It basically means that your horse is a mouther, I guess, basically. So, say this is a, a fencing or a crowd panel or a panel gate or whatever you have your horse in. It walks up 
and sticks its mouth over top of it and bites down and sucks air. That's what they call a cribber. She wore a mask cause she, so she couldn't do it, but she would never gain any weight. She cribbed her whole life. And there's, there's no stopping it once a horse is set in on it because we tried for five years with her. Finally, we just had to get rid of her. And as far as I know, the people that had her got her to stop doing it. But I don't know how because we tried everything with that horse. Her name was, uh, it was Mo. It was my mom's horse. And who the hell? Dang it, I just had it in my head and it just escaped. Flair. That's her name. Like Rick Flair. Um, so, we ended up sold her because we could not fix her issue. Plus, I had three other horses that. I couldn't keep her myself, although I tried, but I had to say no because I had too many horses myself. We're always a horse family, besides my dad. My, my dad hates horses. Um, my mom and my aunt loved horses. That's why I do, I've bought quite a few horse diamond paintings. Um, I really need to get to one of those soon. There's so many I want to do. You guys don't know how bad I want to break open that sneak peek and just do it. I keep telling myself, nope, don't do it. Don't do it. You already have four on the go. Don't do it. But it's so tempting. So tempting. So, my memories of my mom are basically with horses. If we weren't with ho the horses, we were in the shop working. Um, my grandfather was a car guy. So, he... always had cars. We were always working on cars. My grandfather was an insurance adjuster. Uh, when you wrecked your vehicle, he'd go out and look at it and tell you how much it would cost to fix it. Um, half the time, the people would be like, nope, it's not worth fixing it. And my grandfather would say, oh, well, I'll give you so much for cash right now. And they would say, deal, haul it away. So my grandfather would haul it away. Bring it back to the house. Fix it. If it's something we liked, kept it. If it's something we didn't like, got rid of it. The best times were in the shop with mom because she taught me how to build my first motor. She taught me a lot of stuff when it comes to motors, just listening to them, listen to what they need. That's what she used to always say, listen to what they need. Don't listen to the noise, just listen to what they need. And for the longest time, I could not figure out what she was talking about. Listen to what they need. And then one day, we were driving my... I think it was my mom's Camaro. I was driving because my mom was was uh, sick with cancer. And she said, open her up. Listen to what she needs. And I was like, is that what you're talking about? Open her up, listen to what she needs. So I jumped on the freeway and Put the foot to her. My mom's 
Camaro I used to get up and freaking go. And my mom said, well, what does she need? She needs more airflow. Because when you punch it, it just, it like doesn't go nowhere. If it had some more airflow to it and you punched it, it would just pick up and go. Like my truck. You be doing 70 miles an hour down the freeway. You put your foot to it, it's going to burn off the tires. But my truck's set up for hot rodding, drag racing, and all kinds of stupidness. But it's fun. But yeah, I just... Um, this winter, I got to get the... Uh, we're getting ready to take the shop and do a deep clean on it. Take my truck out. I got to take a shelf down above my sh my truck. And then wash my truck really good while it's out. Get rid of some of the spider webs on it. Because she's been sitting for a little while. And then get out there this winter and get some welding done on her. Because she's, she's got a lot of welding that needs to be done to her. And then I'll be having my buddy come over and help me go through the motor, make sure everything's good on the motor, put her back together and go terrorize the hell out of town. Sorry. I had to answer my phone. No, don't start. I swear. Once it dings, it's going to continue to ding. So... Yeah, just being around. That's why I want a horse so bad. Because it would make me feel so much closer to mom. Uh, I think I'm going to get a mule though. Because my dad has kind of said he's okay with the mule. <laughs> Little does he know. It's about the same thing as a horse. It's a half donkey, half horse, so... Yeah, that's going to be interesting. That's going to be interesting. So, sorry about that. <clears throat> I had to get to something to drink. And I have the phone kind of right in front of my face over here. So I didn't want to be rude and be like, what, 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 getting a drink. So, I know some people have said, how have you taken getting over the loss of your mom? And it's like, well, to be honest, there ain't no getting over that. I think about my mom all the time. I know she's looking over me. I know she's protecting me. I feel her in my craft room a lot. And... <clears throat> I know that might freak some people out, but it's the truth. My mom shows up here. And the main reason I'm doing crafts is because of my mom. I want to 
carry out my mom's crafty uh my mom was a crafty lady we used to make for christmas it was reindeer and snowman and then we would make Santa Claus, and it, it, all out of wood. We would all hand trace it out of the pattern and cut it out with the jigsaw. We would all get to town. Well, I say we all. It was mostly me and my mom and my brothers. My brothers helped every once in a while. And get them all painted up. And my mom would sell them. She made a killing out of them. I actually had a lady contact me about, what was it, three or four years ago? And she said, she was actually one of my old um, teacher's aides in uh, elementary school. And she's like, Jeremy? And I said, yeah. She's like, hi, it's Becky. I'm like, oh, holy crap. And then we talked for a while and she's like, how's your mom? And then I told her she passed. She's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I said, yeah. Only one thing came out of losing my mom. I got a niece. My niece, <clears throat> Olivia, was born... Uh, about 10 minutes before my mom passed away. As soon as my brother found out my sister-in-law had the baby, he called my mom and told her that she was a grandma, was a little girl. And my mom told my dad, I'm ready to go. And he prayed for her and when he woke up, she was gone. She was waiting to be, to know she was a grandma. It's all she wanted. It's the only reason she, she stayed as long as she did. I'm telling you. That is the only reason she stayed as long as she did. She wanted to know she was going to be a grandma. And I was at the hospital seeing my niece. After I went to see my mom, I went to see my niece, and I got home, and about 15 minutes later, my dad got home, and he told me what happened, and I, <sighs> yeah, I wanted to do bad things to that man for a while. That day, he found out I smoked cigarettes. I was sitting out front smoking a cigarette. He left to go back to the hospital and I just sit there, smoked my cigarette. That's the night my cat saved my life. I had a cat that I got from a girlfriend in high school. His name was Maverick. Um cool cat. He was a big cat. He was a cool cat. He was sitting on the front porch with me. He knew something wasn't right. He was, he came up to check on me and I sat there and talked to him for a few minutes and relieved my uh, mind for a little while, and then next thing I know, I heard him go, <sighs> and I'm like, what the hell is that? And I wave my hand around to, to notify the uh, porch light to kick on, because it's motion detected, and then there's these eyeballs about 10 feet from me, just looking at me. And then I see my cat, out of the corner of my eye, 
jump on this coyote that was about ready to kick my ass. I guarantee that. And, uh, next thing I know, that cat jumped on that dog, and that dog took off screaming down my driveway, just raising hell. My brother come running out, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on? I said, Maverick just saved my ass, indeed, because... Coyote would have ate me. I don't know if he would have ate me, but he would have probably put up a fair fight. Coyotes are evil little critters. Coyotes are the main cause of deer deaths in my state. Coyotes and cougars. We do have them. Seen a few in my day. Seen a few in my day. I had one put a stock on me. Coming home from falling in the creek. He's heading back to camp. And had a cougar stalk me. But... Those were the good days, good old memories. Straighten up over there. Straighten your life up over here. Uh, I don't know. I just. What would you do? Like, um, let's see, what was it? Uh, in uh, Becky's Madness for Crafts live stream tonight, we were playing. Uh, uh, question and answer or whatever it was and said would you rather would you cut off a leg to save someone dying from cancer or would you get a million dollars or something like that I'd cut my leg off in a heartbeat But all I can think about is the good times and continue to go because I know she wouldn't want me to sit around and not do anything. She would be like, get off your ass. Get out there and do your do life. And that would be my mom. My mom was a woman of very few words, but when she was yelling at you, you knew what she was talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was in my fair share of trouble when I was a kid. I think my older brother was more trouble than any of us. But it was the good old days. I was afraid to get in trouble at school because my mom worked at the school. She ran the, the latch key program after school. So I was always at school. My mom, I didn't feel good. I want my mommy. And they would say, go to your mom's room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sure every, every guy was 
What's up, mommy's boy? If she was still here, I'd still be a mommy's boy. My mom used to make us clothes. Like, I'm I'm gonna go see if I can grab a picture. I may not have a sing an individual picture, but I may have like a collage of pictures. I'll be right back. You see these clothes right here? My mom made the shorts and the top shirt. And bought the tank top. Same clothes over here. Miss you, Papa. And then... There is my grandma, my mom, and my aunt. I was a Disneyland kid. There I am. Oh, yeah. I wore that freaking vest all over the place. All right. There we are with our matching hats. All right, one more. See me as a baby. Yeah, there I am as a baby. <laughs> My mom made that collage. It's a big old collage of pictures of the family. And the most funniest thing about that thing is, is my dad's not in there nowhere. That explains a lot. I'm not going to talk about that one, but... Only good times. Good vibes. Let the good times roll. Uh-oh. Oh, move right there. So, there's a lot of, a lot of memories just looking at these pictures right here. Loads of memories. There a picture of that on here. I'm trying to find one picture. No, nope. there's a picture of me at the beach. You can't see it. I can show you a picture of it because I took a picture of it. Nope, that picture is not on there. We uh, when we were kids, we dug up a a tree in our backyard. And my grandfather stuck a, ho a hose in it and let the hose run for, like, three or four days. And that thing got soaked. And then ripped the root out of it. And... So here's a picture of me at the beach growing up. I'm this little toehead over here. And that's my older brother, my little brother. But 
Blonde hair, blue eyed baby. Until I was about 15 or so. Then I, my hair changed to brown. Oh, I set my drills over here. I was lost for a second. Where did I put my drills? I know. I, sorry about this video. I'm like all over the place. It's not easy recording this video. I was trying not to get emotional. But that's a touchy subject. All on its own. But I hope you guys enjoyed listening to some stuff I did when I was a kid growing up. Remembering of my mom. October 17th. 19 years. I personally cannot believe that. But... It's true. My niece will be 19. And there comes Trapper, man. Or maybe he was going after his sister. Ah, he's going after his sister. It was nice to change the subject, though. Trapper, man. You want to say hi? Sugar bug. Um, if, if you guys don't know, I call my dog Boog, short for Booger. Um, yeah, uh, Trapper has all kinds of weird, um, nicknames. Sugar Bug, Booger Bug. Bruiser. Oops. What do you want? Yeah. Um. I had this dog that my mom bought me. About I want to say about a month before she passed, and his name was DJ. His name was DJ. It stood for Duke Junior, uh, because I had a yellow lab. Um, Yellow Lab, English Pointer Cross, and he had leukemia. Uh, looking back at him, he looks just like Trapper. I was blown away when I seen a picture of Duke the other day. So that's where he, DJ, got the name Duke. Duke Jr. Uh, so his his I named him Duke Jr. after my old dog, but Duke's DJ's dad's name was Duke. Or no, DJ's dad's name was Junior. So I was like, hey, Duke Jr. DJ. So I called him DJ all the time. Um, that was my last thing my mom ever got to me. That dog had, that dog was my ride or die. That dog, and you know, it's weird how that, it works out, but I think Trapper came back as DJ. I really do. Because he does stuff that DJ used to do. And when he when Trapper does it, I'm just like, I'm in awe. I'm just like, 
Really? Did you just go do that? Um, DJ used to always lay his head on my hand when he wanted to go outside. If I had my hands laying up, like sitting in my, my on my leg or something, he'd walk up and stick his nose in my hand. He's telling me he wants to go outside. And Trapper did that when he was like three months old or something like that. And he does it all the time now. DJ used to bark at me when he wanted fed. Trapper does it. And Trapper does it identical the way DJ used to do it. I don't know if I'm just imagining this or what, but I swear Trapper came back as DJ. Like, there's like five or six things that DJ does that Trapper does. It's kind of trippy. If he did, I understand why Trapper does what he does because Trapper does what DJ used to do. DJ used to be the, uh, chase the cats like Trapper does, and DJ used to be the one who would lose his life to protect me and that's the way trapper is trapper trapper don't mess around when it comes to me my brother picked me up and trapper about ate his face off until he noticed it was my brother and then noticed me yelling at him my brother was trying to pop my back And D or Trapper thought my brother was killing me or something, and he came in and, and jumped up on his hind feet and started like snapping at my brother and was like, No. And then he heard me and then looked at my brother and was like, Oh, I know who you are. You're my uncle. And then got all excited. Like, nothing happened. I don't know what you're talking about. That's Trapper. Trapper. But yeah, I, th I swear I think he came back as DJ because he does. He has some of the same things DJ does. DJ used to poop in one spot in my yard. Trapper poops in one spot in my yard. Same spot DJ used to poop in my yard. So this is kind of weird. Trapper. Don't sleep in bed with me until he hears my alarm. He jumps up and gets in bed with me and wakes up with me. And we play a little bit. DJ used to do the same thing. So it is, there's just so many similarities between the two of them. I miss DJ a lot. DJ's my boy. I have a picture of him, I'll show you guys. Um, that's DJ. He was a boxer bull mastiff. He was about a 130 pound dog. That was him at probably eight years old. That was my baby. And then I got this dog. Scrappy Doo. Don't hate about the Confederate flag. It's not racist. Just to set the record straight, it's not racist. Uh, I lost both of them in, within like a month apart of each other, so that was another hard, 
hard thing to let go. And then after that, I I left. I well, when my mom passed away, I left also. I left for two years, I'm almost two, two, two years and like four months. I left. I moved to the coast with a chick, and was with her for all that time. And then got my job back at Lyro, where I work right now, and life goes on. But that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you don't. Uh, I hope you enjoyed listening. Maybe get to know me a little bit better. Um, yeah. If not, sorry. You don't like it. Try to talk about positive and bring positivity. Because it's always good to be positive. So on that note, I hope you all have a fantastic day today. Like always... Peace. Treat each other how you want to be treated. And I hope you're treated the same way back. And as always, everything's linked down below. Um, I'll have to find a link for this and put it down there too. This is an Ever Moment. Uh, the Witch House. It's a collaboration between four or five people now maybe six so all right everybody like i said i hope you have a fantastic day laters mm -hmm.